It's so frustrating when you are trying to be healthier and everything that you read is conflicting. None of it makes sense together. Welcome to the land of and, and this topic today is a big one. Everybody is on a health journey. Everyone's trying to figure out what works, what doesn't, how it all comes together. And so I wanted to share my health journey coming from the big why in terms of we don't have unlimited time to figure this out. And the longer that we can do the whole health thing well, the better off we are. I've been on my health journey since I had a pretty big wake up call three years now. I mean, three years where I took it seriously. Before that, it was always kind of just thinking I lose a little bit of weight, I want to look better, but it was never from the same intention point. It was never from the same perspective that I have now of time is limited. So what is the most effective way to figure out what works for me and what works for my body? Because it counts. And so in 2017, when my brother passed, he died of a heart attack. When it happened, dealing with the grief and the situation and all of that was the primary part of what I was thinking and feeling and going through. But then on the other side of that, I still had to figure out like, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for my family, my parents, my kids? Because heart disease is genetic and runs in the family. So it was a really big wake up call of how do I become healthier? And how do I figure out how to make what I'm doing work for me? I had a really big task of trying to figure out what works for me, why it works, and how can I do this in a relatively quick way? How can I do this and start the journey and continue it where it makes an impact on my health? I didn't want it to take eight years. I didn't want it to take three years, right? I didn't even think of it from that perspective. I thought about like, oh, I got to figure out what to do and I need to figure it out now. And so I went on this journey. I started with going to my primary care. She started blood work. So I get blood work done at that time every three months or so. I also went to a cardiologist because heart disease runs in the family. So what does my heart and my um, blood vessels and my, you know, heart stuff look like? I got an endocrinologist because there is diabetes that runs in the family. And health all sort of interrelates. Um, I couldn't function in a healthy, proper way. I also was feeling both lethargic and very nervous and scared about my own health and what that meant for my kids and my family at large. Because of all this that was going on between my mental health and physical health, I took time off from work. Started the process of FMLA. I worked with my psychiatrist at the time, diagnosed that it was major depression. I have mild depression to begin with. And so when I had, when I gave birth to the kids, I went through postpartum. So that made it and kicked it up. And then with this, I got kicked up a notch when Nelson passed away. And so I was just not in a great headspace at all. I also had a therapist. So I went to a therapist for grief counseling. Um, so how many is that now? There was my primary care, there was my cardiologist, my endocrinologist, my psychiatrist, my psychologist. I think there were two more because I believe there were seven doctors in 2017 that I started going to, to get it all straightened out, to get me in the best health that I could possibly be in. And that included my mental health, that included my physical health, and that included my health history. I focused on those three, those, oh my God, those three aspects. It was really a wake up call and I needed to review everything in terms of my health to make sure that it was where it needs to be. Like it was at the optimal level as much as possible. I started cholesterol meds at that time because they found that I have a little plaque buildup already in my arteries. Uh, the scale is, I believe, anywhere from zero to like 800. And so when I did that test, my result came back as a four. And so you think, four is not bad. That's not bad at all on the scale from zero to 800. Four is pretty good. Except that that's not normal for a 30 something year old woman. Normally, you don't have any 
ranking on that scale until you're in your 50s. And usually being female with the hormones that we have naturally, there's usually no plaque until 50s, 60s. But when we got that result, my cardiologist is like, you have the arteries and plaque of a 50 year old man. Oh wait, no, he said 60 year old man. I'm sorry, what now? And he said, I don't know what to do with you. You are not like any of the patients I have ever had. I mostly treat men. And somebody in your age group is generally unheard of. And I'm like, great. I love to be a medical marvel, but not in this way. I would rather not be a medical marvel in the, you have something going on with your cardiovascular system. But hey, we don't get to choose that. So he started me on cholesterol meds. And this is not something that I would have thought to do had it been for really reviewing and starting to care for myself in a very particular focused way. You don't know these things until you know them. I know that sounds stupid, but you don't because you think, just like I said in my first video, everyone expects that life expectancy for people in the US is their 70s. So you're like, oh, of course I'm fine. I'm healthy, I'm young. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me yet until, you know, maybe when I get to be 50 or, you know, in that age range that I'll start thinking more about my health. But we don't know what our bodies are doing sometimes because it does its own thing. We don't know the genetics that we have are helping us or not unless a problem shows up. And so going through 2017 was the beginning of my serious health journey. I was at my heaviest then as well. I was comfort eating and I was uh, not moving, being pretty sedentary. I was depressed, didn't want to do anything. And so the combination of all of that was not working for me. Started to feel better as I continued to take the meds for my cholesterol, continue to take my meds for the depression and continue to work on my health journey um, and go to my therapist for grief counseling. Uh, my health slowly got into a better place. And so more recently, uh, my gastroenterologist, my GI doctor said that I may have autoimmune hepatitis. I am susceptible to autoimmune disease. I have sort of the markers for it. So I started on this journey called the autoimmune protocol. It is an elimination uh, eating plan. So there's a certain list of things that you can eat. And these are the ones that are generally uh, don't produce any sort of inflammatory response in your body. So after sort of you go through this like four to six week cleanse of all these inflammatory things in your body, then you slowly reintroduce to see what specifically doesn't work with you. And it's very customized to your particular body. Started doing that and I am still on this eating plan, the autoimmune protocol. And I likely will be for, you know, forever more because it makes my body feel better. So I'm gonna stick with it and slowly continue to reintroduce foods because I can tell when I'm having a reaction or some sort of response to a food. Unless you're being really specific and you're like just introducing one thing at a time. Parents with babies introduce foods into their diet to see if they have a reaction. And so it's the same thing. You try one food, just that one food as the new variable, see how you'd respond. And if you respond okay, great, you can add it back to your diet. And my exciting news from earlier this week is that I can introduce wine back into my diet. Can't do eggs, can't do dairy, can't do so many other things, but I will take the wine. Just really just one focus of how do I take care of my mental health and physical health. From 2017, I've lost not quite 30 pounds, 25, 28. My cholesterol numbers, my liver numbers, my sugar levels, they're all the best that they have ever been. I am no longer diabetic or in the pre-diabetic range. I am actually below that. Here comes the practical tips. Three practical tips for your health journey. First one, talk to your family. Ask them what's going on in their life and in their health because it's probably going to be relevant to you. And if you haven't been to the doctor in a while, there is usually this form that they ask you to fill out called family medical history. 
And so the more you know about your family medical history, the better off you are in terms of your health overall. I think we should also be more knowledgeable to what we could be coming up against. And maybe it's already affecting us and we don't even know it. Second question, get allergy tests to figure out what foods you are allergic to. It is super important to what your body is doing. You don't want to have a severe allergic reaction to hazelnuts because you've never had a hazelnut before and you're allergic. Like that's not the best way to find out how you respond to foods. Third piece of this is figure out what foods you are sensitive to. Know what your specific body tolerates or does not tolerate. These are reactions like you have a headache the next day or you eat something and you have so much gas, you could power a small airplane. It could be that you feel sort of brain fog. You're just not sure what's going on because you're just not quite clear. That could be a food sensitivity that you're reacting to that you don't even know about. And I always thought that, you know, you just eat certain things and that's just the way your body reacts. It's normal, it's natural, it's supposed to happen. That's not what your body's telling you. That's not what my body was telling me. It was saying, stop doing that. Don't eat that. But I ate it and it was ice cream. And at the time it was delicious. But I had to run to the bathroom and it was like an explosion because my body does not do well with dairy. And so now, as I learned, I don't have dairy. I just... And so doing this AIP diet has really given me a lot of insight on what my body does when it doesn't like a food. The side effects can last for a couple of weeks. It's brutal. I have no energy. I am so grumpy and miserable. My stomach doesn't feel good. I break out into hives. I feel lethargic. My energy levels are off. I have so much gas that when one of the kids was laying next to me and cuddling, they're like, mom, is that your stomach or are you just letting it loose? Cause it's so loud. It's so gurgly that it's very noticeable. Do I miss certain foods? Sure. I miss eggs. I miss bread, but I know that in the long run, it's, not great for me and even in the short run i don't want to feel like crap for four days after i eat something and i when i started this aip diet i was just starting to kind of get this lethargic feeling where i was eating these foods constantly so there was no end to the symptoms it kept going because i kept eating it but now that i am in this you know reintroduction mode once i eat it i'll see how it goes and if it doesn't go well i stop and then i feel better again it's amazing at how much more energy I have and how much more aware I am of what my body's doing because I can really separate it out. The insight here is know what works for your body specifically. It doesn't matter what the latest trend in diet fat is. It doesn't matter. There is some merit to all of those diets, but it may not work for your particular body. And so that's the goal. The goal for the health journey is to figure out what works specifically to you. And those are my three tips, my three practical tools. The first one is talk to your family, figure out collectively kind of what things are going on. My second one is know what you're allergic to. It's really important to know what you're allergic to. And then third, figure out what the sensitivities are. If you don't want to try it one by one, do a sensitivity test through a company like Everlywell. And I will put the link in the description below. It's worth knowing what your body can and will tolerate so that you are not torturing yourself through the process because there are consequences of eating things that your body does not tolerate and they suck. All of them suck. There's no good one to have. Hey, Land of Anna family, hit that subscribe button for more content. Tell me in the comments below what else you want to hear about my health journey and any other topics that you want me to talk about. I am going to go live once a week on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram so you can see the chaos and things as they are happening. It is Land of And Official. If you're interested in 
the AIP journey or anything else that I've talked about, leave me a comment, tell me, and I am happy to cheer you on along the way.